Hey everybody, it's Naya. Welcome back to Naya and Smile. Hey guys. Okay, so I bought some books. So yesterday I went downtown. May have strolled a little bit further down the street into tattered cover. Here in Colorado we have a, is it a, it's an independent bookstore but there's three of them. So I don't know if that makes it an independent bookstore or a chain. Tattered Covered Books is one of the best bookstores here in Colorado if you ever visit. They are amazing. So I stopped into Tattered Cover this week and picked up a few books. And I also got a few books in the mail from publishers, so I just kind of wanted to chat about them today because I was on a mini book buying band uh, until like two days ago when I just totally like threw that out the window. Okay, so the first book that I picked up that I am so excited for because I started this during the read-in yesterday, Genuine Fraud by Elon. Heart. If you don't know who she is, she is the queen of suspense thrillers slash unreliable narrators. She wrote one of my favorite books ever, which is We Were Liars, and I am still thinking about the ending, even though I read it back in like 2015. That book was incredible, but this is her newest book, and it is the same sort of theme. It is a thriller suspense book. I'm currently 75 pages in, which is almost halfway because it's a very short book. I think it's under 300 pages. 230 pages. Yeah, I'm almost halfway through the book because it is so short. E. Lockhart kind of has a theme of having an unreliable narrator, which I love because it just makes you kind of question the story more. It, it can sometimes get a little frustrating because you don't know what's real and what like is being imagined or things like that. This book, we're following our main character. Now she's currently in Mexico and she is under either witness protection or some sort of protection. She's had to change her identity and move to Mexico and we don't know why and that's kind of part of the suspense of the beginning of the book. She's going by the name Jewel and I don't know if that's her real name or not. I'm not that far into the book. She used to be an athlete and something happened like she like I said it's an unreliable narrator so she gives like you know has these backstories but we can't really tell if she's if it's real or if she's making it up. We know a traumatic experience happened and I'm pretty sure her parents died based off like her version of the traumatic experience. I hope I'm describing this book well because it is so good, but like I said, I'm not completely through it yet. I have high hopes though because E. Lockhart has yet to disappoint me. The next book that I got that I'm so excited about and it's based off a movie that you may have seen called Pan's Labyrinth. I believe it is originally in Spanish, the movie. I just recently heard of Pan's Labyrinth and I googled the movie and this book came up which is a very, very recent retelling of the Pan's Labyrinth story. I'm not sure if Pan's Labyrinth is based off of a myth or any sort of mythology. It sounds a lot like a Greek mythology, I believe. also started this book at the read-in and it is so good and there's also illustrations in it which is really cool. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. It's this metallic blue color and it has um, just like, like the woods kind of creeping in. What really sold me on the book was a little synopsis. This book is not for the faint of heart or weak in spirit. It's not for skeptics who don't believe in fairy tales or the powerful forces of good. It's only for brave and in intrepid souls like you who will stare down evil in all its forms. This haunting tale takes readers to a darkly magical and war-torn world filled with richly drawn characters, including trickster fawns, murderous men, child-eating monsters, courageous rebels, and long-lost princesses hoping to be reunited with their family. I am so excited about this. I love fairy tales. This reminds me of um, a Greek myth and also um, a, one of Grimm's fairy tales as well. It is, like I said, a illustrated edition, so I'm looking forward to looking at the illustrations as well. Okay, the next book that I finally got my hands on. I, every time I see this cover on Bookstagram, I like save it to my little like saved page on Instagram. Now, please correct me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, but I believe it's Circe. Circe, Circe, I want to say Circe. This book is by Madeline Miller and it is the story or is it the backstory or just a version of the story of Circe who is a character, she's a sorceress in the Odyssey. I believe in the Odyssey she tries to trap Odysseus. Now correct me if I'm wrong, I'm gonna sound like such a fake fan of Percy Jackson, but I'm pretty sure it's Circe who's in um, the second book of the Percy Jackson series, The Sea of Monsters. That's who Percy gets trapped by, right? So anyways, this is her story and I'm so excited to read it and um, it's been blurbed by just about everybody and everyone I know who's read it says it's just a wonderful retelling um, and that Madeline has a 
a really lyrical way of writing. Okay, the next book I have here is one I received by Get Underlined. I'm actually doing an Instagram uh, partner with them later this week, so you guys will hopefully see a photo. House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This book is another retelling story, and it is the retelling of 12 Dancing Princesses. I'm not familiar with that original story, The 12 Dancing Princesses, but based off what I know, it is about um, 12 dancing princesses. In this story we're following our main character who she lives in this giant manor by the ocean. She is one of or was one of 12 princesses but it says here that four of the girls actually died and each of them died really tragically. Following our main character as she kind of investigates the death of her sisters and she learns that her sisters were kind of sneaking out of the house and attending these lavish balls and coming back in beautiful dresses and I think that's, I think that's where the um, a retelling part comes in of the story. Anyways, Annalie, our main character, um, starts to think that maybe her sister's deaths weren't accidents and they were actually murders or something bigger was going on. But this sounds fantastic. I'm super excited to read this one. This next package I got from Simon & Schuster. I know this is a book by Mary H.K. Choi who I have seen her name around but I haven't checked out her book which I'm guessing is Emergency Contact because it says it here on the side. First thing in here are these two little pins and one of them has a face of a guy and one of them has a face of a girl. I received a advanced reader's copy of Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi just based off of this very, very schmexy cover. I'm gonna guess this is a contemporary book. I was right, this is a contemporary book and it takes place in New York and we're following um, two main characters, one who is like a social media famous pop star idol. We're also following a guy named Pablo Rind who is an NYU dropout. He works at a 24 hour deli and he is up to his eyeballs in credit card debt. That sounds like every millennial American. Chance has it that they end up meeting at a bodega at 5 a.m. and really hit it off. They know they come from very two different worlds and so they don't see their relationship going far but they do, you know, have an attraction for each other. Things get complicated, relationships come together, fall apart. I'm actually really excited about this because I've heard good things about Mary H.K. Choi and I received one more package from Simon & Schuster and I'm so excited about this because it says cursed on the box so I know it's gonna be like thriller or horror or something. I'm gonna guess that this dagger is a bookmark, but how stinking cool is this? They sent a metal dagger bookmark. I might just have to start using bookmarks because of this. This is like too cool not to use. This book is actually going to be a Netflix original series. That is so cool. I'm not sure if they released this book in companion to that or if this was like came out before then. Dear reader, I am beyond excited to share this arc for Cursed with you. It's the brainchild of legendary graphic novelist Frank Miller and screen writer Thomas Wheeler. It's a novel that utterly reimagines the Arthurian legend. Okay, so like the sword, right? Where he pulls the sword out of the rock. Okay, I'm gonna continue reading this. It's a novel that asks, what if the lady in the lake kept the sword? It's a novel that is perfect for fans of Sarah Day Maas, Cassandra Clare, and Leigh Bardugo. It's a novel that is so utterly cool, I can't believe I'm lucky enough to work on it. Thank you, Justin, for this book. I'm a fantasy lover, so this sounds right up my alley, and there's graphics in it as well. Oh my god, okay, I'm not gonna spoil myself, but there's a graphic right there. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Until next time, keep reading, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!